welcome to our commerce class. Let's look at business organization. Last class, we look at introduction to business management. If you've not watched that video, please watch that video. There's a video before this class. Today, we are going to take three objectives for the class. And we are going to look at what business organization is, functions of business organization, and we're going to look at organizational charts. We we'll just take a sample of an organizational chart. Every organization have the way their uh, organization is structured. So we'll just take a sample of an organizational chart. So let's look at our class for today. We're going to take the first one, business organization. What is a business organization? A business organization is an entity formed for the purpose of carrying on commercial enterprise. The organization helps them meet their goals. Every business have an objective, a goal they intend to meet. And among these goals is for them to maximize profits, to expand, to work efficiently, to be effective, to compete better in the market, to plan, to direct, to organize, and to get all these foods together to achieve the objective goals of the organization. So, business organization yeah, is an entity. An organization comprises of a group of people. But when it becomes business, it means an entity registered that is legal, that, it's, um, that has come in place to carry out business activity. So it's an entity that is formed for the purpose of carrying on or carrying out commercial activities. And this help the organization to meet their goals. That's just the explanation to business organization. Then, what are the functions of this business organization? Having seen what a business organization is the first objective. The number of functions that a business organization carry out I'm going to talk about seven of these functions. They are involved in production, in procurement, in management, finance, accounting, public relations, human resource, human resources, procure, uh, production. Organization has to do with business organization has to do with entity that comes together for commercial activity. That's what we discussed there. Now, they have to carry out production in order to make the business function effectively. So production will be carried out. And in order for production to be carried out, they need raw materials to be procured. Procurement. They buy raw materials or semi-finished products that will be used in production to carry out business. The management, all of these cannot just work on their own. Somebody has to manage the production process. Somebody has to manage the procurement process. So they require management. Remember we discussed introduction to business management. You have to do things to put everything together. Organizing, directing, financing, all of this has to come together to make it happen. Then finance. That means money is involved. So in, in, in planning management processes, it requires money to carry out production. It requires money to procure. And it requires money for management to plan effectively. Then accounting. After you must have carried out production, procurement, you put in managerial uh, processes in place, 
the finance have been put in place to carry out the TBT. Accounting is necessary because accounting has to do with the recording of business transaction or business activities. It can be daily or as the case may be, how you want it. And different books of account is required to keep track record of how all these other processes is being carried out. The lack of accounting will lead to collapse of the entire structure or the entire business. So accounting is required to be able to monitor what is happening, track the financial processes, see how procurement is being done, see what and what is being produced, see how the sales are being carried out, see what uh, money is coming in or how much money is coming in and going out. What are the profits that are being obtained? Public relation. No business function effectively without relating well with the public. Your customers are out there. So public relation is very important because this is where you get the interest of the general public. Interacting, communication, advertising, getting your products out there. Then human resource. One person cannot make the production process complete. So human resources. How do you organize human efforts that is put into production? And so in the management process, human resources is required because humans have to bring about production being completed, procurement being carried out, management being planned, finance being managed effectively, accounting being well recorded, public relation communicating effectively with the outside world. All these require human resources. So, human resource is required. So, we've seen the functions of business organization. They carry out production, they carry out procurement, they carry out management function, finance, accounting, public relation, and human resources. Now, we are going to look at the third objective, which is organizational chart. We're going to take a simple chart to explain what we have. Yeah, what the class writes or the kind of business chart we will take. Every business has its own hierarchy of how things are done. But we're going to take a sample. Yours might be different. Uh, each business might want to develop their own organizational chart. But let me just give an illustration of a particular one. Now let's use this simple chart. I'm going to use a simple chart. I'm going to use a simple chart to explain this. I'm not going to use a complicated one. I'm going to use a very simple one. First, the board of directors. This is a chart of an organization, a simple organization, small organization that runs this kind of chart. There are some complicated ones, but I'm not going to bore you with that. Let's look at this. Um, board of directors. People are the helm of affairs, managing directors, people who the board pass information to. Then from the managing director, we have executive committee. From this managing director, this executive committee most times come up with different ideas that they will tell the managing directors and then the managing directors will get back to the board. So this comprises of different committee, committee in charge of sale, committee in charge of advertising, committee in charge of um, public relation, committee in charge of research. These are executive committee that um, can help in passing information here. Let me add research. Research. Okay, and so after that, you have the production manager in charge of production, the sex manager, the personnel manager in charge of human resource. Under this sales manager, we have the marketing manager. All of these are involved in sales. Then personnel, we have the human resource manager in, in charge of workers' welfare and other things concerning workers. Then we'll have purchase manager 
in charge of procurement. If you remember the functions, procurement. Then the finance manager here, everything has uh, about finance is carried out. Accounting is here. Then research manager, people who work hand in hand with the production manager to see how they come up with the product. And all under them are in the employer. So the hierarchy of power moves this direction in the chart of an organization from the board to the managing director, managing director to the executive committee, executive committee to the various managers of different departments, then down to the employee. This is an organizational chart. I didn't love this place off because I want you to see the three objectives we have for the class. We've seen what business organization is. We've seen the functions of business organization. And now we have finally looked at organizational charts. They are pictorial illustration to show you how an organization is structured. So if you walk into an organization and you look at their notice board and you see a pictorial illustration showing how their organization function, you will see the chart and see people in hierarchy of power, how um, power moves from the board to the executive, to the committee, to the different managers of different departments, then to the employee. It's a simple one. There are people that have other branches or other you know, way their chart goes, but this is a simple one for a simple small organization. So I don't know the type of charts or the type of structure organization manage. If there is an alternative way, you can tell me below the comment box. If you lay your hands on other organizational charts, you can go through it and see the difference between that and this one. Thank you for being part of the class. I will see you in our next class. I will discuss other issues. Please follow along. The aim of this class is for you to learn and relearn. The aim of this class is to bring learning close to you. So I want you to watch this video, watch them again and again so that you can understand what we are saying here. It was my pleasure being here. Comment below the comment box if you have questions. There are questions that the, uh, uh, some of you ask. I am going to take a section to discuss some of these questions. I have about three questions in my hand. I'm going to deliberate on those topics. And for those of you who want us to cover a particular topic, please comment below the comment box. If it is what we will cover, we will let you know. So, I'm happy to be here. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you. Invite more persons to be part of this channel. I'll see you in the next class.